placed right here. I'm going to miss you. Until the next episode. Hey guys and happy Sunday. I am about to do a protein treatment in my hair. I'm outside. I'm trying to figure out what the dog is barking at. What she barking at. And um, you guys know I did a poll asking you guys what do you want to see next on my channel. Uh, most of you guys, well it was a really a close tie. Although some of you guys snuck in uh, the fact that tell me your answer about 10 o'clock and yeah 10 o'clock p.m. Friday was it Friday yeah Friday and then you guys also snuck in that you want to see Shay Shay knowing I told y'all ain't gonna be no Shay Shay video y'all gonna always sneak Shay Shay in there so yeah the protein treatment went only by one point and I usually do a protein treatment after I get my hair straightened uh, we're gonna see if I have heat damage if I do have heat damage oh well life goes on because I'm not gonna worry with it one more thing guys I want to tell you something else I don't know if you know or not, but Tyra Banks, uh, American, Next, American Next Top Model show is coming back out in January. I like this show. I don't know if you girls and guys like it or not, but Patrick Starr is going to be on this show. Patrick Starr, if you guys don't know, he is a, um, a Vietnamese beauty guru. He is a guy that puts on makeup. I know people got hangups about men wearing hangups. Uh, men wearing makeup, but he's going to be on the show, so I'm excited. The show comes out January the 9th, and if you want to see him and her, get your TV set for Tuesday, January the 9th. All right. Hey guys, I want to show you how Shay Shay thinks she is so tough and how so much she thinks she's a born dog. Hey, little girl. Hey, pick any leaves up. You up there barking. Who that out there? Who is it? That's right. Tell them they're making too much noise. Thank you. Hey guys, so I'm in the process of shampooing my hair with my Shea Moisture uh, Moisture Retention Shampoo. I just wanted to show you guys something. Do you see these curls in my hair? Look at that. Look at these curls. These curls are coming from your girl's hair. And this is a representation of no heat damage. This is the heat, um, heat protector I use. It's called Chi 44 Iron Guard. And when I put this on my hair to um, flat iron it, it really protected it. Plus, my friend, okay, you guys know that I had flat iron my hair first with my flat irons. And the temperature on there is around 410. But I went back, I went to my friend and had her to straighten it for me because it didn't, my, I didn't get my hair that straight. And I wanted my hair straighter uh, because I wanted a more accurate trim. So she used a flat, she used a heat protector on it too. And her irons were set at 420. Well, she said they were set at 420. I don't even know. Because when she got through my hair, my hair was straight. You know what I'm saying? But, guys, look at these curls popping. You don't see no stringiness. So, how do you know if you have heat damage? Heat damage is when your hair is stringy on the ends and your hair won't bounce back to its curls. I don't have that. And I was kind of worried, which I don't know why. Uh... I was kind of worried that maybe I will have some heat damage, especially with my crown. My crown is so silky and delicate. Uh, but yeah, this is just, this is my hair just with shampoo in it. Look at that. And it's so much prettier since I cut those ugly ends off. I don't like ugly stringy ends. They just drive me bonkers. And I cannot comb my hair with those strings on there. So girls, don't be afraid to trim your, those ugly little ends off. They make your hair much better, prettier, and healthier. Okay? So I just want to stop in right quick in the middle of my process and show you that heat protecting is a good thing to use for your hair. I have a link in the description if you want to use, if you want to try this. This really works. I've had this for years. I'm like, I don't know if it really works, but this really does work. And yeah, so I guess I'll continue with my process of doing my hair. Uh, and then when I get to the protein treatment, I'm going to uh, come back. I want to give a few tips about the protein treatment too before I, I uh, get to that. Because I don't know if I'm going to be talking during the, when I put my protein treatment in. So I want to tell you now. What I've learned from my experience with a protein treatment, you have to uh, make sure you, you add a moisturizing, deep treatment in your hair. Because protein treatments dry your hair out. They dry your hair out really, really bad. Let me show you something. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be using this moisture, uh, moisturizing shampoo. I'm sorry, moist. So like I told you guys earlier, I'm going to be using this um, 
deep conditioner. This is called Miss Jessie's Sweet Back Treatment, Super Sweet Back Treatment. And this one is good for uh, adding more, oh, it's for, ooh, Lord Jesus, hair growth and moisture. And when you use a protein treatment, you got to put the moisture back in your hair, guys, because if not, your hair going to be dry and brittle. It's going to be dry anyway, but at least you can kind of like start balancing your moisture back in your hair. And yeah, uh, so usually when I do a protein treatment, I put my moisturizing conditioner on after I do my protein treatment the same day. But say for instance you're tired and you don't really feel like that. You just rather just go to bed or whatever. You can put a leave-in conditioner in your hair and then on your next shampoo, put your moisture back in there. Okay, so you could do a deep conditioner with your cap, however, however you want to do it, make sure you add the moisture back in because if you don't, you try to comb your hair, it's going to be strong. That's what protein treatments do. They make your hair strong and it prevents your hair from breaking. So if you don't put the moisture back in there and add that balance, you want, you want your hair to be pliable, which means you can go like this, bam. You don't want it to be stiff. You don't want to be too weak. A lot of girls like to just add moisture to their hair. They don't want to balance it out with protein treatment. Everybody can't do a protein treatment. Okay, but I like it for my texture. Uh, you girls say I have like a 3C, 4B, and 4A hair type. Deep, con deep conditioners and protein treatments are good for my hair. So you got to find what works for you. Also, um, I want to tell you guys that after I do put a protein treatment in my hair, I do not blow dry my hair afterwards. So one time I tried to blow dry my hair, my hair was so strong to where it felt like it was just when the comb tried to go, when, my, when I used my blow dryer comb, it was like, it just wouldn't go through. I don't have the hand technique to get my blow dryer to go all the way through my hair. So I don't know if it's me or if it's just, if it's just me. I don't know. So I usually, when I do a protein treatment, I don't go back later on and try to blow dry my hair. It, it's like, I don't know, it's like, it doesn't do well. So like I said, um, protein treatment is good for strengthener. So when I put that protein treatment in, me taking a comb and trying to do all that fancy stuff, especially when my hair is dry, it seems like it just makes it harder and it breaks. Okay, so I think that's it for right now. If I have any more tips, I'll stop and come back and talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, I wanted to tell you that I am finished shampooing my hair. This is what my hair looks like after I rinse the shampoo out. I also want to tell you guys another tip I thought about when I was um, rinsing my hair. If you guys have protein in your um, shampoo, you don't have to use a protein shampoo and a protein conditioner. That's too much protein. So find one protein at a time. That's just my opinion. You don't have to. Um, find one protein per uh, product. You don't need a whole bunch of stuff. You don't want to be looking like a brittle brick here. That's too much. To answer your question about how often do I put protein treatments in my hair, right now, today, in this part of my journey, I only do them once a year maybe twice a year because my hair is healthy and it doesn't need too much protein. Now in the beginning of my journey I had hair color in my hair, my hair was over processed, it was going through some things so the more damaged your hair is the more often people tend to use protein treatments so you have to find out when is, when is it best for you to use a protein treatment. Some people don't use protein treatments at all. I do, I do because I like the way it strengthens my hair especially after I get through adding heat to it. How often do I add heat to my hair? I only do my uh, I only blow dry my hair like maybe twice a year and straight, straighten it once or twice a year. But this year in 2017, I only straightened it once and added heat to it once. So I'm doing pretty good this year. So yeah, that's what's going on. I decided I'm going to do my protein treatment right here because I like the lighting and the way my hair looks right here. Um, so today's protein treatment again will be Motions CPR. I like this one. Once I get through with it, probably, I got a whole lot left too. I don't know if I'll still use it or not. We'll see. Uh, when I do my, when I do, when I have my hair session going on, I don't comb my hair. In the beginning, in the middle, I usually don't do it. A lot of times I may, yeah, I comb my hair. I comb my hair once, sometimes. But some, it all depends on where I am with the um, process. So sometimes I'll comb out my hair when it's it, when it has conditioner in there, or at the end. So today I'm only gonna comb my hair at the end of this session, but I only I only comb it like towards the end once. I don't comb my hair through the whole process. It, it takes too long, and plus you're just wasting a lot of time combing out hair when you don't have to. But when my hair is real matted and tangled up with all those dead ends, 
I did find myself combing it probably in the middle of the process versus the end because I didn't want my hair to keep tangling up like that. It was just driving me bonkers. By my ends being cut and by me blow drying my hair and stuff, I don't have those, I don't have that super kink and super matting going on right now. I don't want to deal with that like that. So you, you guys still see my hair is still healthy, although I added heat. It's all about how you learn how to take care of your hair. So I used to part my hair in four sections to add my conditioners in. I don't know if I'll be doing it today. It might be four sections. We'll see. But I just use my fingers and I separate the hair. So the hair is so pliable and um, not so matted because I don't have all those little ugly little ends anymore. I'm so glad those ends are off. So yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Now, by me having more hair, although it doesn't look like it, it looks like I don't have any hair now since I got it cut. Um, I got my, my clamps in this bowl right here. This process should go by pretty, pretty easily. Uh, since I have more hair now, I typically don't try to make thin sections when I add my conditioner. So I do all conditioners the same way actually. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this conditioner and section the hair, you know, piece by piece or part by part. Why do I section my hair and add my conditioner? Because I want to make sure the conditioner gets all my ends from root to tip. I don't want to just slap it on the outside of my hair and only the outside of my hair gets the conditioner. So that's why I separate the hair piece by piece and go in there with my conditioner. I'm using bigger sections now too guys. I don't want to spend a lot of time on my hair anymore. I don't have to. I'm in a good place with my hair now. I don't need that much work. All I need to do is just maintain. At first, in the beginning guys, I was on it boy. Every time I looked around, I'm doing something to my hair. I don't have to now. I'm at the stage where I can just, just maintain it and keep it healthy. So what I'm doing now is preventative maintenance. When you get your hair healthy, you have to keep it healthy. You have to keep what, what you used to do in the beginning um, going on. But not as, you don't have to do, be so extreme. Because a lot of stuff I used to do in the beginning, I don't really do anymore. Although my regimen is kind of like still the same, I don't have to work as hard anymore. I made it past the hard part. So all I got to do is just keep it healthy and keep it, you know, pliable, juicy, and pretty. Yeah. So that's it. Now, when I used to, when I used to uh, do my hair in the beginning, boy, I would still be on this section trying to make sure I get every piece of hair strand. But now since I'm a pro and I got them growing hands, I don't have to do all that. Just put the stuff in your hair. Slap it in your hair like your mama used to do, girl. So, yeah. Here we go. I coat the outside. And then I get the inside. You don't want to just coat the outside, outside of your hair. You want to coat all of your hair from root to tip. Just doing a little bit of light detangling. I have a few videos of me doing this already and I'll probably I'll add a few videos in the cards so you guys can watch them but I, I basically do the same thing over and over I just take bigger chunks of hair now look how, look how my hair separates now I ain't got those little ends on her no more Then I'll probably put on my little, uh, this is called a heat cap, a heat um, plastic cap. It holds, it holds a lot of more heat in your hair. I don't really like sitting, on, sitting under the dryer, but you can get those kind of heat caps from Sally's Beauty Supply. All this stuff I get usually be from my local beauty supply house or Sally's. Everybody. 
well most beauty supply houses usually have the same thing so I'm finished with this section see how fast I went through there it don't take long so I'm going to do these other two sections where does this go oh that goes over there I'm going to put some on here I, spe I especially don't really comb my hair with this in there because I don't want to, um, I don't know, it's just, this, this stuff won't make your hair move. So if you get kind of scared about, oh my God, I can't comb my hair, my hair is so hard, my hair is so dry, it's part of the process. It's, it's perfectly normal. Yes, it's going to be hard and dry, but you, you should be where you are in your regimen to where you know how to add moisture back to your hair. Don't be afraid when your hair dries out. So what's your hair dry out? If your hair dries out, just put the moisture back in there. It's not a big thing. You can't stop your hair from drying out sometimes. Just the thing, the prop, the thing is to know how to put it back, put the moisture back in. Here we go. And what's the purpose of preventing your hair from getting too dry? Well, the purpose is if your hair dries out and you comb it, it's going to break. Breakage is not good for our hair. So if our hair breaks, guess what we have to do? We got to just start working real hard to build it back up. We don't want no setbacks as much as we can. So to prevent breakage, you do things to not break your hair off. Because if you break your hair off, you know, like I just said, not only that you're setting yourself off, I mean setting yourself back on your hair on your journey, you're also um, ooh, have to get trims more often. Don't nobody want to keep cutting their hair off? Ah, I don't need this thing. I'm putting it there anyway. You don't want to keep having to trim your hair. So the healthier your hair is, the better off it'll be with less trims. We got to trim it off though. We got to trim off those ugly ends and breakage. We don't want no raggedy long hair. Well, I don't want no raggedy long hair. I don't know about you. Girl, my hair is so long, but you got split ends this long and I can see through your hair. I don't like that look. But that's just my personal preference. Everybody got their own thing. I'll be telling y'all. So, almost finished, guys. I move way quicker now, guys. I'm, I'm pretty much a pro at my hair. And I know a lot of people, especially beauticians, they kind of like frown upon us showing you guys, girls and guys how to take care of your hair. You can have nice hair nice healthy hair at home i know people be saying we well, you, you know that kitchen hair you ain't doing nothing see that's where my edges is going in right there i don't know if that's gonna come back but um y'all be simply watching youtube doing all the kitchen styles and stuff hey whatever it takes to be a winner a lot of us don't have money to go to the beauty shop and today's beauty, beautician, sometimes they charge a lot of money. Because you have to pay for the products, you have to pay for the stores, you have to pay for the tools. <laughs> My nose running, y'all. You got to pay for a lot of stuff, whereas you just get your own products or make your own products at home and do what you need to do. You save a lot of money and time. Nothing wrong with saving money and time. So if they say, oh, you're just an old kitchen, why don't you call me a kitchen, some kind of little kitchen chick. And she went to school and she's a master's and this and that. I said, when you get to talking, my hair all the way um, down my back. Don't, be try to, don't try to put others down because people don't flow like you. People kill me with that. I told you we all got separate brains. We don't all have to think alike. It's nothing wrong with the way we think. Stop being so mean. Why what I do is better. Okay, it's better for you. Good for you. So guys, yeah, I'm finished. So let me coat this. Oh, hair came down. So let me give it a one more coat because like I said, my crown is delicate too. It's just delicate in a different way. Ooh, my hair can just split apart without a lot of problems. So we got 
when they get the braid twist and add a little bit more back here and guys you don't have to let your hair you don't have to let your conditioner stay in your hair for no whole day and sleeping all night in it and 30 and 40 minutes is long 30 minutes is pretty much long enough actually yeah 10, 10 minutes is pretty good all depends on where your state of your hair is but no more than no more than 30 minutes you ain't gotta go overboard with your hair because after a certain while your hair products ain't gonna do no more than than what it's supposed to do what it's gonna do is overdo it you don't want to overkill your hair so i'm putting on this little heat cap i'm not going to sit on the dryer but by me putting my conditioner in my hair already it's been in here long enough so i'll probably just sit with this for like maybe another 10 minutes and then i'll be back hey guys so i am back i just got through deep conditioning my hair and i wanted to show you my hair as it is straight out of the deep condition it feels so good and so supple girls and i'm glad this part of my journey of today is over it's not a journey but i'm just glad this task is over with um so let's see the back so yeah guys i hope they showed the back but if it didn't show the back this is what it looks like so so this is what my hair looks like guys so all i have to do now is just finish the process which is add in some conditioner or no yeah i think i'm adding my leave-in conditioner and some oil and moisturizer and that'll be it hey guys so i wanted to show you what i did to my hair after i um shampooed it and conditioned it and protein treated it today i put the blue magic oregon oil leave-in conditioner in my hair and i also used the blue magic castor oil as my sealant this is a hair grease and oh and i wanted to show you guys how I add in my um, Mark Lano Luster sometimes. This is it. This is a really thick, heavy, con not conditioner, uh, moisturizer. And sometimes when I French braid my hair while it's wet, I will um, put my other stuff in my hair first because it's more of a slip. And then I'll put this in later after I finish my hair if that makes sense to you guys because this is so thick and heavy and creamy to where I can't French braid it fast enough it kind of like stops the flow so what I do is take a little bit put it on my hands like this and I'll take a little bit of it and put it on each braid this helps seal in the moisture even more I wear my hair like this under my braids so if you're wondering why I got my hair like this, it's because I wear my hair like this under my braids. Then I'll take whatever's left over and put it on the ends. This really, really helps seal in that moisture. This is my best secret to long, healthy hair by the springtime. Wear my hair uh, braided and twisted in the wintertime under wigs and stuff. You don't have to be under a wig for it to do anything, but I'm in the mood to wear wigs. Okay, guys, my battery is dying, and I'll see you guys in the next video.